Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, as you know, today is the start of our annual delegate conference. Um, over the next three days, I suppose, we'll be debating a large number of issues of concern to our members. Um, our members feel that they have contributed hugely to the national recovery and want early significant <coughs> movement in the res restoration of pay, and pay and working conditions will be under discussion for the next couple of days. Um, many of the members severe financial pressure and a minimalist pay restoration will not resolve their issues that they have in their own private lives. Um, and as such, none of them have felt any sense of recovery yet. And another main issue for us and one of the key issues that I think is there for every nurse and midwife on the ground is the issue of reduced staffing and the intolerable working conditions that many nurses face in their workplaces. Critical um, staffing issues are very key to the agenda and there will be much discussion about them over the next three days in relation to restoration of staffing levels, the recruitment and retention of nurses, um, the overcrowding in our EDs and in our hospital wards um, and how all of this is inhibiting how nurses and midwives work. Um, as you saw this morning, the overcrowding in our ED departments is up at 36% since 2006. And at that time, the then minister called it a national crisis and it's continued to rise since then. For nurses and midwives, the conditions are unsafe and they feel and uh, have extreme worries about the quality of care. The common consensus, 3.6 billion was taken out of the health system over the last six years. Uh, the, this year's budget, uh, uh, welcome, uh, though it was, increased that by about 325 million or restored 325 million. Since then, you've had the ED task force, which had about 74 million. So we're saying 400 million back out of a reduction of 3.6 billion in the last five years. So that tells you the extent of the, the hole into which our health service has been placed by successive government policies. <laughs> The implication of that was, and we've said it again and we'll say it again and again, 5,000 nursing posts lost, uh, about 3,500 frontline support staff posts lost. Um, we have more doctors working in the system, we have more allied health professionals working in the system, and that's welcome, but they can't work without nurses and midwives and frontline support staff. So, as Clara said, we gather today in the context of um, everybody speaking about recovery, uh, the government waxing lyrical about, you know, we're, we're the greatest little country in which to do business and so on. But yet our members, the 300 odd people coming today, come from a health system that has been underfunded for years, that has been left short staffed, where, where patients are having their care compromised because of that short staffing and where the people providing that have suffered a minimum, and the minister is wrong here, a minimum of three pay cuts, <coughs> most of them, about 16% cumulatively, when you add in the pension levy, the pay cut, and the attack on premium pay. Um, and then on top of that, they have universal social charge and the property tax and so on. So the people that we represent working in the public sector have no sense of recovery, uh, no sense of, a, of, uh, of this is, uh, things are getting better. And that is why the talks beginning next week have got to start delivering that restoration. No one sitting here or gathering today expects everything to come back in one fell swoop. But a significant first step is required, coupled with a clear timetable, a roadmap for restoration in, in the medium term. And that has got to in, in, include the hours that we lost as well. And the other thing I think is going to dominate this conference, as, as, as Clara said, is staffing and recruitment. Mm. Okay? We have reports coming just this week, colleagues, of employers, because they've no one here in Ireland, they've gone to India in recent times, they've gone to the UK, and they're drawing a significant blank. And the reason they're drawing a significant blank is that the word has gone around that nursing and midwifery in Ireland, the workloads are intolerable, mm -hmm. the hours are long, uh, the, the, the educational opportunities are minimal because they've all been cut. And unless and until the government addresses that, acknowledges it to begin with, and then addresses it, it isn't just medics we have to attract back. We want the world's best medics. We also want the world's best nurses and midwives. Ireland trains the world's best uh, uh, nurses and midwives, but 5,000 alone have gone to the UK in the last five years. So as we gather today, that's the environment. So we have that mixture of health service sensitive stuff about patient care and staffing levels, 
And then we have that wider issue of nurses and midwives as public servants uh, wanting some of the money that the government borrowed off them over the last five years back, as well as a, a roadmap for, for future restoration.